So Ian has played the new Gollum game. Up until now, we've just seen a few trailers. Am I being me when I say the whole game seems to be stealth platforming? Yeah, it's a uh, fair sort of stealth. It's a large part of like the gameplay loop. One of the levels we played was very much about how it feels to play moment to moment. And it's a lot of either tossing a stone at a vase to distract someone so you can sneak by them or using kind of Gollum's climbing abilities. Some bits of the levels are a bit more open and you can kind of tackle as you like. The second level that we played more kind of sets up what it's going for narratively. After we played that level, we kind of spoke to the co-writer and someone did ask, you know, why Gollum? He's not big, he's not strong, he's not, you know, like... And the kind of answer we got is that when it kind of comes to Lord of the Rings, like, fewer people have actually seen more than Gollum, right? Like, obviously, he's interacted with Sauron and lived. He's met Gandalf. He's seen the elves. So you very much have that tool. So kind of going back to the second level we played, you're in a place, um, in a very kind of gritty castle where you meet someone called, um, I want to say the Candleman. So. And... I won't spoil the event, but obviously he's trying to get certain information out of you. But what's the real the real thrust is then that kind of conversation that happens within Gollum's head, sort of between Gollum and Schmeagol. And is that kind of like, do you either just lie your way through it and just sort of stay solo, or do you try and like make an ally there? And obviously Gollum and Schmeagol will kind of argue about that. And then you kind of have to decide who's right. But then even after you decide who's right, you then have to convince the other half. So if you go with Gollum, then you have to convince Schmeagol that, yes, actually, this is the way to go. And after that sort of level, I kind of sat down with the game's kind of co-writer and I kind of said, well, what's like the relevance of that? Like, is that just sort of... Because even throughout the level, like, you can sort of make small remarks. Mm. I think Ad uh, just is more there for color. So I kind of asked him, like, you know, like, what's the wider, like, implications of this? Like, is there kind of a ripple effect, right? Because you mm. kind of see the likes of, say, Mass Effect or Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, how the decision you make sends you down a certain path, and that kind of influences the latter parts of the game. And he set some expectations by saying, like, you know, this isn't, Detroit become human however it will affect how the game kind of pans out like it does kind of affect who you meet who lives who dies and I think there's a certain he said there's a certain level that the way you kind of act like it very much like influences how that plays out mm. so it's more a case of yes while this is a stealth platforming game a huge part of it is also the narrative element being able to go places that gollum's been within the lord of the rings universe and explore it and meet characters but then also telling your own narrative story with gollum or Schmeagol, depending on which one you want to so that's clearly a huge part of it as well and also i noticed as well we got some more footage but there's a lot of different places that he goes uh -huh. where were you able to go when you were playing then so the two levels we played was one you see in the footage is when he's trying to escape um, the company of a group of elves that he's kind of captive in, which kind of involves doing escaping down the river. And that's kind of a very more like, it's more green, it's more lush, it's more mm. kind of more popular kind of colors. And then the other one, which is a bit more story focused, is this kind of very like grim castle. It's somewhat too different good two different levels to explore because they're kind of the exact opposites of each other based on those two alone there's definitely seems to be a good bit of variety in what you'll what you'll see did you enjoy playing it it's one of the tricky things if i could preview like it makes a good introduction but like Ooh. i think i'd like to see it evolve if you know what i mean like the story is pretty interesting i like the idea that you know like you can kind of there's replayability there's different ways it can go that seems interesting the level I played that was more focused on gameplay, like, it served as a good introduction, you know, the whole kind of, there's people wandering around, you want to make sure to kind of use their blind spots, make sure they don't see you, whether that's kind of tossing a stone out of vase to sort of create an opening, whether that's just sort of um, going down a different route. It's not entirely, like, free, you can't climb wherever you want, it's a bit signposted, but like, it's pretty clear, for example, so like in the elf level, like 
there's these very kind of bright purplish flowers on the walls and if you see that that basically means yes you can climb on there there's kind of marks on certain walls where you can wall run and there's kind of other more puzzly bits back in the darker castle that was more narrative focused there is actually this part where you basically need to like hatch an egg and they don't really tell you how to do it you kind of have to figure it out but through kind of wandering around like you kind of see instructions sketched onto certain bits right. so like it doesn't entirely hold your hand i think like as terms of a preview it's a fine introduction into the fundamentals of the game how much that involves or evolves into something more interesting and more gripping. Yeah, can you level up Schmeagol? <laughs> yeah, can, exactly. Can he double jump? Because um, I think that's the other thing is like, I may be being a bit harsh on it, um, but partly as well, it kind of depends on how long it is. Does it outstay its welcome? Do, you, do we know how long it is yet? No, I don't know how long it is. Because I think that's the thing, like, that there's only, I can only see this being entertaining for so long if they stretch this too thin and pull it out doesn't matter how interesting the narrative is doesn't matter how much it tells me about the lord of the rings universe i think there's going to be an element of like oh i'm hiding in a bush again waiting for the guards to pass i'm throwing a rock again and again because of the fact that i don't see how they can flesh out the character as much to level him up or give you different abilities that can make it interesting i think this is going to be quite a hard sell but you did enjoy the preview that you got yeah, I was, um, like, I was pleasantly surprised. Like, it wasn't, I think like everybody else, obviously, I was aware that when the game was kind of announced, it's kind of been delayed a few times, so I think it kind of slipped from, like, the public consciousness a little bit, and then it kind of popped up again, I want to say, sort of last year. I don't think it put its best foot forward. Mm. So based on that, like, I think it's a much improved sh showing. I think it looks better and it was kind of more fun than i initially expected like is it enough to be like a day one buy for me not yet but at the very same time like it feels like there's movement in a positive direction yeah how much that kind of continues from now to launch remains to be seen but at least from now like there's some positive positive movement sorry and so when's Gollum releasing uh you'll be able to play it on may 25th Okay. Well, it'll be really interesting to see how how it does in the review and what people think of it when it does come out. Um, yeah, so looking forward to that. And thanks for chatting to me after playing the game.